Tonight, organized labor to shut down the country with unprecedented nationwide strike that would include the private sector over government's decision to clear SNAP to proceed with sale of 60% stake in four top hotels in a Greek minister, Brian Champon's company. From Monday, 15th of July, 2024, all workers in Ghana must not go to work until SNAP publicly announces the termination of the process for the sale of its shares in the hotels. The Ghana Medical Association, nurses and midwives and even judicial service staff have all issued separate statements directing their members to stay at home indefinitely from Monday. And we are setting out a roadmap so that it doesn't happen that we withdraw all services at a go. So it's going to be graduated and we are going to make that announcement um, either by close of today or over the weekend. And Top Story is always brought to you by Telecell, connecting energies, holy insecticide, spray and coil. Enjoy a holy sleep. Tonight, brace yourselves. Organized labor is set to shut down the country indefinitely from Monday with an unprecedented nationwide strike that will include the private sector. The decision was announced today by the umbrella body of all labor organizations. Now, the nationwide strike will be indefinite until government terminates all processes for the sale of 60% stake in four top hotels to a Greek minister, Brian Champon's company, by the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT. It follows the announcement in Parliament yesterday by the Employment Minister Ignatius Bafuewa that SNIT has been giving the all clear to proceed to sell the hotels to their Greek minister's company. Listen to the Secretary General of the TUC, Dr. Yaba, at a news conference today. We have followed the developments on the proposed sale of 60% of SNIT's stake in four hotels with very keen interest especially after organized labor leaders met with the President of the Republic on this matter on the 25th of June 2024 at the Jubilee House. Yesterday, 11th of July 2024, the Honorable Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, who is also responsible for pensions, made a statement in Parliament that MPRA has approved the sale of 60% of SNES shares in the hotels. We recall that on the 28th of June 2024, the Board of MPRA issued a directive to SNET to suspend the negotiations with Frog City Hotel Limited. We therefore find it extremely difficult to understand how and why MPRA would turn around to approve such a flawed deal two weeks after the directive. Yeah. Organized Labor would like to reiterate its well-known position that the proposed sale of SNE shares in the four hotels is not in the best interest of Ghanaian workers. We therefore demand that SNE terminate the process immediately. From Monday, 15th of July, 2024, all workers in Ghana must not go to work until SNE publicly announces the termination of the process for the sale of its shares in the hotels. And some news just coming in the last few minutes. Uh, we are learning here, John News, that Rock City itself and Brian Champon may have withdrawn that bid, that controversial bid, uh, as part of the processes to hand over 60% stake in these four top hotels. We'll bring you details of this pretty shortly. But joining me in the studio right now is my colleague, Blazer Soga, who was at the press conference organized by Organized Labor and uh, with a bit more on this. And, and Blazer, before we even get into the uh, what we're learning uh, as far as Rock City is concerned, this must have been a pretty charged atmosphere where you were today with Organized Labor. 
Uh, no doubt about that, particularly when organized labor is indicating and revealing to us for the very first time now that they indeed made attempts to scale this matter up uh, beyond the protest that was led by not only Member of Parliament Samuel Kujetu Ablakwa. Now, organized labor uh, through TUC is revealing to us now that on the 25th of June, which was last month, the group or leadership of TUC engaged President Akufuado on this matter. And it appears that um, there was no results um, after that meeting. Okay, and so there you have it. They met the president, it didn't happen. And then yesterday, we had the minister on the floor of parliament just confirming that after the NPRA, the pensions regulator, had reviewed it, they all clear was given to Senate to proceed. But the implications, we understand, are far-reaching as a withdrawal service could pose a significant threat to public hospitals mm. uh, as well as other state institutions. Uh, and speaking about the minister himself, uh, the organized labor said they were under the impression that the suspension, which was issued uh, earlier by the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, was still in force until the minister came yesterday on the floor of parliament to tell the House that government has reversed that suspension. So that was perhaps the last stroke that broke the camel's back, a reason for which they held a crunch meeting at the TUC Hall today. Now, the leadership briefed, uh, you know, uh, the members of other groupings within TUC, um, with many of them, of course, expressing surprise as to why the minister was then coming with a controversial, de uh, you know, a controversial decision, suspend reversing the, su the suspension. Um, they then resolved at that meeting that there was no going back on the decision, first of all, to withdraw all services on Monday, which is 15th of July. But there's going to be an implication which will be, for, for instance, for the health sector. Because for the teachers, they have resolved to withdraw their services. But how about health, which borders on saving lives? Uh, it includes services rendered by doctors, for instance, the Ghana Medical Association, and the registered nurses. So another meeting or sub-meeting was held after this crunch meeting um, for the health cohort so they could consider what they are describing as a roadmap. So knowing that there are lives involved in this process, what they've decided to do is to go with a phase out approach so um, the entire health sector yes might grind totally to a halt if nothing is done to abrogate this contract between rock city and senate except to say that the doctors and the nurses are mindful of the possible implication for the health sector so the president for the registered uh, nurses perpetual ample for has been providing some sort of a reason why the health sector is and you know ca they can't help themselves but to join the exercise in this phased approach so what we intend to do, we've put our heads together, those of us who have been in this meeting, and we are setting out a roadmap so that it doesn't happen that we redraw all services at a go. So it's going to be graduated, and we are going to make that announcement um, either by close of today or over the weekend. And um, we hope and pray that all our constituents will follow suit. So if I go to the hospital on Monday, almost all services will be done? Not all services will be available on Monday. It's very likely that OPD services will be out, but all other services will be running. And we are giving specific dates for the withdrawal of all other services. So we'll follow the roadmap. Some say this is just because a hotel is being sold. Um, how, how do you respond to you know, the arguments that looking at what's happening, the health it's sector? It's not just about a hotel being sold. Look, SNET until 2010 had been the sole entity in charge of our pensions. With the pension reforms, we had other players like the private sector coming in with the second tier and the regulations for the third tier, which is voluntary. Now, Senet is still in charge of first tier pensions. And when I retire, my monthly pension is going to be paid by Senet with the current um, in, uh, systems in place. So we don't think that it is just enough for Senate to say that they are selling off the hotels or selling a, 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 a shell. That is not the case. Our voice should be listened to and what we are calling for is quite simple. It's quite simple. Stop the sale. Let's look at other alternatives of ensuring that these hotels um, operate better and make the necessary returns so that we move on in terms of what we, we need to, to generate from these hotels.
And uh, joining us right now is the uh, the Ghana Medical Association's General Secretary, uh, Dr. Richard Salome. Doc, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Good evening, events. Uh, great to have you. Uh, are your members also joining this strike? The simple answer is yes. We are joining the strike, and from Monday, we are starting from withdrawal of OPD services up to the 17th of July, and then the 18th to the 21st, we withdraw emergency services. And if government still doesn't want to come to the table and we stop all these processes, then from 22nd of July, all services will cease. 22nd of July, including yes. emergency services? Emergency services stop from the 18th. That's Thursday next week. That's a pretty short time span you have there. Well, I believe from the discussion so far, you have noted that this didn't start today. Um, organized labor, of which GMA is a part, has been engaging. There have been various calls on government to stop this process. There have been meetings, and subsequently on the 25th of June, the organized labor met the president of the land, that's the highest office of the land, and then appealed to him to step in and cause Snape to stop this whole process, the sale of the hotels. This is not about anybody purchasing these hotels or anybody in particular. But this is, we do not, we as the owners of the funds for which Snape is holding in trust for us and investing on our behalf, say we do not want the sale of the 60% shares that Snape holds in these four hotels. And we do not want it. And we feel that that is what we want and that must be adhered to. But that hasn't been listened to. The statement from the MPRA board suspending came. We thought that was some respite. And then subsequently the minister then tells us clearly that they've okayed it for this to proceed. And so we are left with no choice but to lay down our tools and cause press on our demands that this sale must stop. And so it didn't start today. And so uh, let's not make it look like it is something that is short, at least within the health space. The unions within the health space, Ghana Medical Association in particular, have decided to give some breathing space, at least, to attend to the OPD services. By which time we believe government will see reason in what we are saying and then at least ensure that SNET stops that whole process. It is not about, we've heard some rumors in the media that... Uh, Oxity has withdrawn its bid. I mean, another company could be on the line to buy it. So we are saying it's not about Rock City. It's not about anybody. Do not sell the 60% shares in those hotels. Let us manage them properly and let us uh, maintain those assets properly so that they can uh, uh, return on the investments that we have put into this. Uh, but you are an essential service. The labor laws lay out a very clear procedure if you want yes. to embark on a strike. Have you followed that? My brother, essential service does not mean that you must uh, 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 watch on while certain things happen. If we are essential services, we must be treated as essential. And I believe pensions of workers in Ghana is actually an essential matter in itself. And the key thing here is that most Ghanaian workers, after working for 30 years, 40 years, 20 years, retire straight into poverty. If you just calculate the, the pensions of workers in Ghana and convert them into dollars, we are below the poverty line. And so I think let's not move trying to use some of these tags about essential service workers and tie us into things. At least we have given notice. We believe that government will listen. If they don't listen, we have from today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all the, uh, uh, the Secretary General of TUC has said is there should be a clear public declaration by SNIT stating that the whole process leading to the sale of these hotels, 60% shares in these hotels has been stopped. And then subsequently we see clear evidence stating the same. And then this would not even uh, uh, go on. But if they refuse to listen, then obviously we would act, as, 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 as is said. Thank you. 
and I know the leadership met today and took the decision, but give me a sense of how doctors across the length and breadth of this country that you've been talking to, how are they reacting to this? Oh, our colleagues are fully behind us. We don't take decisions by ourselves as executives. The National Executive Council, which is the second highest decision body, uh, decision making body in the association, had a meeting today and informed our members also of this, sought their input before actually going into the meeting at organized labor and subsequently giving them feedback to it. Our members are poised to follow the directives by the National Executive Council of the association. And yes, the National Executive Council, a contrary decision and communicate same to our members. So our members are poised, they will stand down and we will ensure we are monitoring across the country at, uh, and they have already promised to adhere to the directives we have issued in the roadmap. And just before you go, and this is all obviously coming up because of procedure, but the Labor Act I quoted was very specific, though, that they, under the essential services, an employer uh, carrying on or a worker engaging an essential service shall not resort to a lockout or strike in connection with... My brother Evans. Community. You say that, okay. you, you say that in spite My of brother this, Evans, you I have never heard you quote the same labor law to government and quote the Pensions Act to government that when pensions contributions, which are supposed to be paid, delay beyond two weeks, government, the, whoever pays that money, is supposed to pay 3% interest on that in compounding form. Government delays these payments. We do not talk about it. You don't cite the labor law. So, my brother, the laws are made by human beings for human beings. We have said clearly this has gone on for God knows how long. I think this is simple. Let's not uh, bedevil ourselves in uh, the law says this. Let's apply the law in equal measure to the government, who is the employer here, and the employees, and not always seek to apply the law strictly to the employees, poor employees who retire into poverty and put them into straight jackets, whilst we pussyfoot when government, which is a powerful person and should actually be the ones you should be holding to uh, account, uh, you don't apply the same to them. I want to hear you use the same veracity and effort and force to push that whenever they delay in paying arrears, <laughs> the money is running to arrears, paying contribution, pension contributions for workers, they should also pay this amount and ensure that that is paid. So, uh, my brother, let's not go down that lane. What we are saying is simple. We have today, tomorrow, even early Monday, government should ensure that SNED comes out to announce that we will stop this whole sale of our shares. Straightforward, we will sit again and quickly call the strike of uh, uh, the industrial action off. If you persist and continue, then we will follow the roadmap. So let, let, let's not obfuscate issues. Salome, thank you very much. And that there is the General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Richard Salome there. And we've just been joined also by the President of the Ghana, uh, the National Association of Graduate Teachers. But before I bring Angel Kabonu in, who was part of this meeting today and yesterday indicated to us that your position today will be less core a nationwide strike. We have that uh, notice we are getting now from Rock City themselves. We double checked this with Brian mm. Champ on himself and confirmed that indeed it is from Rock City. What is it that Rock City has decided to do tonight? Well, so this is dated today, 12 July, directed at the Director General of SNATE. Attention, Mr. Kofi Ose Osaf Mafo, titled Notice of Withdrawal of Bid. It reads At all material times, we believed that we had participated in an internationally competitive bid and we're happy to have learned of our success having regard, having edged out other 15 organizations that participated in the process. It therefore came as a total surprise to us that some of your stakeholders have raised concerns about your decision to stick strategic partners for these hotels. We have also taken notice of ongoing media discussions on your decision to seek strategic investors for these hotels. We have also taken notice of all these flowing from all the commentary monitored and the undue negativity that has attended this commentary we feel you have not done enough to engage all your stakeholders leading to perceptions that we don't want associated with our brand we believe that such negativity is not only injurious to our brand but also jeopardizes the success of the investment we intend to make in these hotels therefore 
we are writing to inform you of our decision to withdraw our bid and discontinue our pursuit of this investment opportunity. Finally, in the interest of accountability and transparency, we consent to your release of all or whatever parts of our bid documents for public scrutiny or publish same if it should become necessary. We wish you continued success in your endeavor. Signed for Rock City Hotel. There's a statement coming in just now. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Quick question to there. And I want to bring in right now Angel Carbon, who's the president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers. Mr. Carbon, your reaction to what you just said? You mean my reaction to the letter just read? Yes, uh, Rock City has withdrawn the bid. Well, that is Rock City withdrawing its bid. I don't know whether Snake, in spite of the withdrawal by Rock City, intends to uh, continue the seal process or not. Our position this afternoon is to call on Snake to abrogate any action of selling the uh, p p properties of Snake. So we are waiting for Snake to issue that statement because we don't want the sales to go on. We think that the whole deal is bad. We are against the situation where public servants are appointed to, uh, public officials are appointed to superintend over state property. They run the state property down, and then the next option is to sell. Those who run the state property down are not even called to account for their stewardship. We have a situation where sometimes even the people who superintend over the state property that is purported to not to be viable themselves become shareholders in the new entity that buys the state property. We think that we are being shortchanged and we think that we should stop this misbehavior as a people. So this withdrawal for you isn't enough. You're waiting for Snake to issue a statement saying that you're backing off completely. So give me clarity here. You want Snake to decide and communicate to you that they're no longer selling of the 60% stake. Yes. If you read, if you read the uh, statement signed by the Secretary General of the TUC, the uh, chair of for, uh, Forum, and then the head of uh, Federation of Labor, Representing all the public sector workers, it states clearly that we are calling on SNIT to suspend the sale process. So, so this, so this is not about who they are selling it to. No, it's not about no. It's not about who they are selling it to. It's about the prince. It's a principal position that organized labor is taking, especially when organized labor is indicated that. We have a problem with tagging those hotels as not very as not profitable. If they are not selling it, but they have spent two hundred million cities already to try and revive it and have failed, what's the alternative from organized labor? You have they, a stake in this. Uh, look, the state should audit that two hundred million and see whether it was appropriately spent, because I can't see how you will convince anyone. That a hotel like a hotel at the Labadi beachfront is not viable, and someone who is running a hotel in some cloister somewhere in this country is making profit. I cannot understand why. But that hotel is just one of at least six that they yeah, have. But, what about but, the but rest? Every, every hotel does have its management uh, uh, people. Every hotel has having its own management people. You see, we are beginning to infuse into our minds as a people that anything run on behalf of the state is rightly to be run down. And that they, we, uh, once you say it's a state property, when you run it down, then you are justified. Were well, we not in this country when ECG, we handed it over to some people and they made millions and put the millions home? Did it all happen in those countries? So your alternative when it comes to the other non-performing hotels is what? If SNIT announces today that they're no longer continuing and proceeding with the sale. You see, it is, you see when we say SNIT, the people there in that institution called SNIT is just the management unit managing the pension funds of a 700,000 Ghanaian workers. That money does not belong to those people. The money belongs to the entirety of people who have worked 
people who are working and people who are yet to work. And when you are appointed to a position in Smith, you are appointed to a position in Smith to manage the resources of the people, both cash and material resources. And it is because you believe that you have the acumen in making those assets viable, that is why you agree to take the position. But when you got there and you realized that the kitchen was too hot, you lay down your tools and tell the president that the job that you gave to me is beyond my ability. As simple as that. Don't come and be telling us that I saw facilities and they are not viable. That, 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 that we are not ready to have that. Mm. Mr. Kamalu, thank you very much there. And, and that day is Angel Kabonu, uh, organized labor, very clear on this matter. Uh, Rock City's uh, decision to reduce their bid isn't enough. They're still going ahead with their strike beginning on Monday. Uh, I have with me on the line a man who told us yesterday uh, first that uh, he, together with his other stakeholders in organized labor, will be shutting down this country. We've heard organized labor do exactly just that, announcing it at a press conference. He's the man who started this campaign uh, Samukudu Tablakwa joins us right now on the phone. Uh, Mr. Blakwa, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Uh, just uh, less than a few minutes ago, we heard from Rock City in that statement that they've issued and they've written to SNE directly. They are withdrawing, uh, in fact, have withdrawn that bid. Your reaction to that? Well, good evening, Evans. Good evening to all Ghanaians. The Rock City withdrawal does not address the issue. We are saying, hands off our hotels. The president must announce if he does not want this shutdown to take effect on Monday. He must tell all his appointees, those who are selling, those who are buying. And he is the one who chaired a meeting with organized labor, trying to convince organized labor to come along with him. I don't know what his insatiable interest is in this sleazy transaction. The Rock City withdrawal does not help matters in any way. Remember that Mr. Freddie Blay has been all over the place claiming that his sons put in a much higher bid than Rock City, between 150 to $200 million. So what shows that if we allow this Rock City withdrawal trick to put us to bed, what shows that Freddie Blay's sons would not show up Monday morning and say that they are stepping in and that they want to buy since they claim they have put up a very high bid of $200 million. Look, the principle is that this state capture must stop. What is going on in this country? Everything in sight. Look at what has happened to the judges. The judges' bungalows opposite the American embassy. See what is happening to our parks and gardens land. See what has happened at the WEB Dubois Center. I mean... This marauding state capture ought to stop. The only way this national shutdown will not happen on Monday is for the president to speak to the nation in a contrite manner and assure us that he has instructed his appointees who have been all over the place defending this without shame. Look, if you read the transaction advisors report on this transaction, you will wonder why anybody will be defending this transaction. The insider dealing, offers that were not made available to other bidders, they allowed Rock City to say that they will pay only half and spread the half over 24 months. They didn't have a bank guarantee. Their financials could not have attained financial close. They could not have paid for the installment. Damning, damning verdict. You have read the transaction advisors report very damning and we have not even finished addressing the conflict of interest issues the violations of article 78 article 98 of our constitution i mean how on earth has this transaction been defended by government officials all these weeks it's been about two months of defending this without shame i mean in which democracy can you imagine if the ndc was in power and the cabinet minister says that they are going to have these hotels. And, 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 and people want to defend this? Yeah, but Mr. Kujito, Look, considering that Rock City has now withdrawn that bed, all those issues aren't relevant anymore, are they? Because now that politically exposed individual is off the board. 
No, but there are other fundamental issues. What we are saying is that hands off these hotels. These hotels should not be sold. Remember that when you read the May 19 statement of SNCC, they sought to create the impression that these hotels are not doing well. They sought to put them in the same category, paint all of them with the same brush. We had to then expose them. We put financials of these hotels. And it emerged clearly that Labadi Beach Hotel, at least, is very, very profitable. Uh, Ridge Royal is not as bad as they made it look. The rest is a management issue. <laughs> you know. And if you look at the story of Labadi Beach Hotel... It's just a management issue. Look, in any case, why is it that government officials mm, tell us that they cannot manage these hotels, so let's sell it. And then they sell it to themselves. When it becomes DS, then they can manage it. I mean, what do these people take us for? So when you are in government, you can't bring your ideas to bear to transform the fortunes of these state assets. But you can only transform the fortunes of these state assets when they become yours. I mean, is that patriotism? O organized Labour just told us that if they get a clear notice from SNET tonight that they are no longer selling the hotels, they will call off the strike. Is that the same position you hold? That that is enough? Absolutely. That has always been our position, that we must be told in very clear terms that these hotels are no longer for sale. Remember that earlier today I also filed an RTI request the NPRA has shown that they don't want to be on the side of the Ghanaian people. They want to join this conspiracy uh, to loot our state assets. So we are also demanding how they came by that dubious conclusion the minister was uh, announcing in parliament yesterday that this deal must, must continue. So all of these state actors, the only way forward, if they don't want this national shutdown on Monday, is for them to announce that this whole conspiracy is over, we have busted them, they cannot continue, and that these hotels will not be sold. Enough of the looting of state assets. It has to stop. Let me ask you, organized labor statement today says, all workers, will you also lay down your tools on Monday as a member of parliament? Absolutely. Our caucus has discussed it. Uh, what has emerged is that we are going to declare, and our statement is coming out in the next few minutes, we are declaring Operation Blockade. Uh, if we don't go to the chamber, um, our colleagues will have a field day and a lot of these, you know, um, transactions that are not in the national interest, they are just going to ramp them through. And uh, and when we return to work, uh, we will have a Herculean tax trying to reverse these things. So what we have said is that operation blockade, no cooperation. We will go to parliament only to stop everything, every government business. We are not going to cooperate, no matter what is, is presented, whether it's a bill, whether it's a media review. We are not going to support any government business, no matter how harmless it is, until the government backs out. So we are going to issue a statement in the next few minutes in full solidarity. It's going to be signed by the minority leader himself, the Honorable Dr. Kesela Tufosin, and he will be announcing clearly this uh, operation blockade which will ensure that we remain in solidarity with organized labor and we do not allow any government business in the chamber to go through. And that will also begin on Monday? Yes, on Monday. Okay. Uh, Samokudu Tablaka, thank you very much. Announcing uh, uh, what the minority is also set to do in solidarity with organized labor, Operation Blockade, they call it. And if you're just joining us uh, tonight, uh, organized labor is set to shut down this country with its unprecedented nationwide strike that will include the private sector all in opposition to government's decision to give the all clear to SNE to proceed to sell 60% stake in four top hotels to Greek Minister Brian Chompon's company. And as you've been hearing here on Top Story, uh, Rock City, that uh, hotel that belongs to Brian Champon, they have written to SNE. Uh, withdrawing their bid. Uh, and I also want to bring in uh, Perpetual Ofori Ampofo. Uh, she's a president of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwifery Association. Joins us on the line right now. Perpetual, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Hello, Perpetual. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great to have you. And I don't know if you've heard that uh, Rock City, they have withdrawn their bid. Uh, will that mean you're calling off your planned strike on Monday or you're still going ahead? Why should we call off a strike action? The action is not targeted 
at Rock City or Brian Achampo. There were a number of bidders in this whole process. And what we are saying as organized labor is that we do not want these hotels or the shares of SNIT in these hotels to be sold off. We believe that SNIT must set up and reorganize the management of all these hotels so that they can function profitably. And this is what we have been saying over time. And it has just fallen on deaf ears. We have been pushed to a level where we could not contain it anymore, more so hearing the Minister of Employment and Labor Relations on the floor of Parliament yesterday, stating categorically that SNIT had been cleared to actually sell off um, its shares in these hotels. And so we are not backing down in any way until SNIT itself comes out clearly and officially to let us know that they are going to hold their shares in these hotels and they are going to do the needful in ensuring that the management of these hotels are turned around for the benefit of all of us. And you have a roadmap. What's the roadmap? The roadmap has been communicated. And from Monday to, to Wednesday, we are going to redraw outpatient services. From Thursday to Sunday, we'll redraw emergency services. And then following from there, we'll redraw all services. That is the roadmap. Uh, and what stops this? If you get the a, a statement from SNIT? The only action that will stop this is when SNIT takes that responsibility of backing down this whole process of the sale of its shares of the hotel and ensure that the engaged stakeholders, more so with us as workers, because it is our contribution in these hotels. You see, over time, successive governments have made it seem as if because they pay a certain percentage of our pensions to SNIT, as if they own the resources of SNIT or the money that go into SNIT. If I work for you and the law in the nation requires you as an employer, ultimately government, to pay a certain percentage of my salary as, as contribution to my pensions, it comes back, the ownership is mine. It is not yours. It is not yours. So we have a stake in this. And when we say that we don't want the 60% shares of SNIT in these hotels to be, to be sold off, why, why won't all stakeholders listen? Why won't they listen? So we are waiting for SNIT. SNIT should do the needful, and then we also back down. Otherwise, we will follow suit with whatever roadmap that we have set out. Perpetual, thank you very much. And that day, Perpetual Fourier and Puffo, another member of the, uh, what the labor law identifies as an essential service, uh, president of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwifery Association. Ella, you heard the Ghana Medical Association too. So you have to brace yourselves. Unless, as you've heard, SNIT issues a clear statement to organize labor and to all of us saying they are backing off and they will no longer be selling the stake in those four top hotels. Uh, that's it for Top Story tonight. You want to uh, get onto our social media pages and also onto myjoyonline.com for the very latest as this begins to unfold a bit more. Gonna connect in a minute. You, yes, you. You listen to